All right, for this tutorial, we're gonna talk about the different types of Tyco and other cases that we use. I use the word Tyco because that is one of the most common cases used in aerial and underground construction for the purposes of fusing fibers. Um, I wanna talk about the different sizes of cases and the different components that are within the case. Probably the most common case that you'll come across is the one that's on the table here currently, and this is the Tyco B can or 450B, depending on who you talk to. And in other realms, we call them a medium case. Uh, it's called a medium case because of its size mostly. Um, and as for that, uh, the different uh, network providers, uh, they all have their own standards of what they want to work with and why they want to work with it. Um, for, for what we're doing here today, we're going to just describe kind of the basics of what a can is. Um, and as well, the different sizes and, and the different restrictions within those sizes. Inside the box that you would see, the first thing that you'll see, you would see the can and a couple of bags with some parts in them. So in those bags in particular, I have this, this bag here, holds numerous pieces that we don't need. We would generally pull out the can plugs that go in the base of the can for the unused ports that, uh, that you might be able to use later on or you'll never use at all. You'll see one of those laying on the table here. The rest of these items in most case scenarios, we toss them in the trash because they're unused. When we get the can out, first thing you'll do is you'll pop this ring loose this ring here holds the base of the can. There's a seal, a O-ring single at the base of the can that this helps to hold together. And then you can see here, there's a specialized lock that holds that down. There's also an indicator here that on that lock, that this is an optical fiber cable inside of this, that there is the potential for permanent injury to your eyes if for whatever reason that optical uh, laser leaves the fiber cable itself. When we open this can up, you'll see inside the can here that we have the very basics. This is a tray. This particular tray here is equipped to accommodate up to 24 splice tubes. That doesn't mean that this case will only have a 24 strand fiber inside of it. There is a likelihood that this case may have as many as 72 strands inside of it, which could come into the base here as two separate 72 strand fibers. You might have a 72 strand fiber that's, that's entering the case, but then it may go out to several customers that might be several 12 strand fibers. One of the limitations of this particular case would be the number of ports that are available at the base of the case. These ports are of a specific size that can only allow up to a specific dia diameter of fiber optic cable. You generally won't be seeing something more than 144 count cable here, but again, it all depends on the manufacturer and engineer's specification, uh, as well as the provider and what they expect to have. This piece that I'm holding in my hand right now is the airtight seal for the base of the can. So once the cables enter, the, the, the base of the case here, then they would go through the O-ring seal and our bonds that we have available for the different types of cables that we may have inside this case. So we would put this over the cable first, then this item here would slide through that. This then clamps around the cable, and for the unused ports, then we would use this device here to be able to seal off those ports. This here, once the cable is, once the case has all been built and you feel as though it's properly uh, secured to be sealed, this spins. When this device here spins in, it squeezes the two of these pieces together. When this device spins in, it will tighten this down together and it will cause this gel to squeeze together and bulge and fill the inside of the base of this, the base of this can. You'll see that this is a common feature as we go through the different types of cases here, that there's always a way to airtight seal uh, on items that may have to be exposed to elements, uh, such as in a handhold. The handholds generally will fill up with water during heavy rainstorms, or they're just built within a ditch bank, and it's always full of water anyways. Um, you might also have it up in the air where it's exposed to snow and rain and heat and cold, and those sorts of uh, uh, element changes can allow for water to draw inside of the case over the many years that it might hang up there.
As we look at this device, this portion here, there's many features to what this piece is within the case on this particular B can. Uh, as again, I can go through and say that we can put six cables in there. There are different features that could allow us to put another device out here for drop cables, and that device would then allow us to put four different types of drop cables into one port. That brings us to this section here. These are strain reliefs and hold downs. This generally would snap into there. The cable would go through this. There's another device on the outside of that that then slides over the top of that. And then if it's a 12 count cable, we have, it looks like just a standard uh, hose clamp. This hose clamp would go around this alligator. If we looked closely at this, you'll see that there's little barbs here that'll hold the cable secure at that location. But then further inside the, inside the case, we would then find these. These are strength member secure attachment points. These here, they connect into that alligator clip that holds onto the outside of the cable. And as that slides in here, we then have a device here that would then take the strength member that we, we've identified on the center of the fiber optic cable. We would cut it to this distance and then you would place this device over the top of it and secure that, secure that within the case. And that helps to keep the cable during shrinking and expansion due to the elements. These, all these items here are necessary to keep the cable from being pulled out of the case or for all intended purposes pushing into the case, all of which can cause damage or uh, attenuation kinks within the fiber optic itself once it's constructed. We'll go more into depth about how to build these cases later on. Once we're inside these cases, specific trays go with each case. There is a specific size of tray for each of these cases. I have here also on the table, I have a large tray, this is called. This would fit into one of the cases that I'll show you in a minute. But you can see that I can put 12 fibers in each one of these chips here. And each of those 12 fibers means that I can put 12, 24, 36, 48, 50, 60, 72 fibers within this tray. That's a lot of fiber optic cables to put into a singular tray. We generally are only gonna find that we're gonna put 48 fibers. Most of the time we'll do 48 fibers in a tray. But then again, we may be, uh, we may be tripped up. There are some features to some of these trays. You can see this one actually has a, the cover in place on it. I don't have the cover on this one here, but this has this little red device here that allows us to pull the trays up. If it's a, a built tray, which it means it's occupied with fiber, I can flip this down and it'll hold it in place without having to allow us to bend this many times while we work below it. In the same form factor of trays in the large tray style, we happen to have this tray here. You'll notice that it's considerably thicker than the previous tray that I showed you. This tray here is designed for buffer tube splicing where we're doing single strand fusing. The one that I have here, this one is designed for ribbon splicing and it allows us to put a fiber in and then the ribbons would lay flat or vertical within this space here, holding them in place. This particular tray could hold 12, 24, so it could hold 144 here and 144 here of ribbon splicing. This particular tray could potentially accommodate up to 288 uh, strands of fiber as opposed to the tray below it in the same form factor but thinner, we can only put 48 single strands of fiber within it. This is an important piece that over, is often overlooked within the B can, the C can. This is designed, there is no area below this in order to be able to hold the loose buffer tubes that are not being used or that are for storage purposes. This slides over the top of that and holds them in place. Again, we'll show you more details on how to construct these in a later video. Some other items that are within the bags are these white zip ties. These white zip ties are specifically sized in order to be able to fit into the hold down hole that you see here on the tray. They're also designed of sort to be able to wrap around and secure through this felt, the buffer tubes within the tray, keeping the buffer tubes from falling loose and causing attenuation or breakage of the fibers uh, once they're outside the buffer tube. This felt is also used in many other aspects, but for mo most purposes, we cut it into small squares. These small squares then wrap around the buffer tube itself, and then in, and then in conjunction with the zip tie, would hold the fibers 
securely within these holes on the tray, or if we look on this larger tray here, you'll see that the, there's similar holes that we would use the zip tie to secure. Again, we talked about the plugs for the, uh, for the airtight seal of the end cap. This is a larger hose clamp for if we were working with a larger cable, and again, a larger, longer uh, uh, strength member securing attachment that we would use if we had a larger diameter cable going into this case. There is generally a nut driver here for most situations. We have this size um, adapter on our electric drills, allowing us the ability to be able to secure these. So we, most of the time we have our hand holding things in place, we can bring that drill in and tighten that in quickly. That also happens to be the same size of this device that secures the strength member to the, to the uh, strength member attachment bracket. This is within most of the cases that you will see from Tyco. This is a bond strap. This bond strap that would, would be used to clamp around the armor that is within a armored cable. For bonding purposes, we do have some companies that we work with that do not uh, approve this for bonding. So you'll learn later some of the different types of bonding attachments that you might have to use depending on what company you're working for. Most of the time, telecom does not accept this because it doesn't make a a large enough connection onto the armor. Uh, however, uh, in most case scenarios for copper style uh, coaxial companies that were working to use fiber transmission to their nodes, this is uh, adequate as far as they're concerned. This red strap here within the B-CAN is designed to hold many trays that you may have stacked up here. You can see there's accommodation for more trays of this sim similar form factor to be secured in here. This little chip that's inside of that is designed very similarly to what this red piece is here to give you the ability to lift your trays up, then you'd slide this clip in place. Once you've taken this, uh, this strap off, you can hold them in place if you had to work in a lower tray of many trays stacked up. That covers what it is that we would see if we were working within a B can. So let me show you some of the other cans and their differences. The next case that I have in front of me here is uh, of the same series, the 450s by Tyco. Uh, from the 450s by Tyco, this one is a common can that we're currently using on a telecom fiber to the home projects. This is called the C can, it has to do with its size. The reason they chose, the reason that they've chose this particular size can is because of the number and diameter of fiber cables that they can put in the end of it here. It has a bigger structure to it. Again, very similar in construction. You have, the, you have the end cap here. We have the strap to be able to hold the trays in. So uh, very similar in construction to the B-CAN, uh, but as well, the, the trays are sh shorter. You can put three chips in them that would give you the ability to be able to put 36 or 48 count of fiber into a single tray. It's not recommended just given the amount of fiber that ends up having to lay down inside of the tray. Most case scenarios, we're seeing 24 strands. Again, we can see that in the end of this case here, there's many ports. These ports are slightly larger than the previous can that we looked at, the B can. There are more bond points that are located on this, so you have the ability to bond six different cables as opposed to the B can that we just looked at. They only had, they only had three bond points. Depending on who we're working with, they may want you to bond everything together on a singular bond, uh, and then in some situations, they want a separate bond for each, and then they want it labeled on the outside and co coordinating with the bond bonding nuts that you see on the back side here. In most case scenarios, that is if, if it's underground and they need to do uh, locating for the fiber underground, they wanna be able to see that it, A, it is bonded, but then B, know which cable it is that they're working with in order to be able to connect their equipment to to bond to. That covers the C-CAN, uh, the major difference between the two. It is stubbier, but it allows for a larger cable to be mounted into the end of the can here. And then form factor wise, if you have multiple cables that are going into a hand hole, the shorter the case is in this case scenario, you can put this into a smaller hand hole, or you can fit this and many other cables into a hand hole. Along those same lines, looking still within the Tyco, but now we're at the Tyco 600 series. Uh, this is the Tyco 600 series. There are many features about this particular case that are hard to see without actually breaking into it, but there is the ability on these cases that you can take 
you, you can enter five cables into this port, five cables into this port, but as well, if you get the right skew, you can also use this end port down here to enter in as well. Uh, just all depends on what the engineering firm and the, and the particular uh, communications provider would want you to do or what they need for their network per se. This one attaches considerably different than what you had seen in the previous cans in the 450 series. This one has many hold downs that then as well have bolts in, the, in each end of it to be able to seal it and make it airtight. When I lift the lid off, you'll see very easily that there's a lot more room within this case. For the sake of uh, preparation and time here, I'm not gonna go too deep into all of the components of what this case is, but there are some key things to know about this case. Um, for instance, you'll see that the case, this particular case comes with two end cap seals. These particular end cap seals are designed for a four, four place or four cable entry. There's two of those. Generally, we generally try to go in and out of the same one if it's going to just be a single set of cables coming in and out or we'll come in on one side and exit on the opposite side. There are some standards that you'll learn about during construction and depending on who we're working for of how they want to handle that. If we look a little bit closer in here, you'll also see that there's very similar features to what we, what we talked about earlier in the B-CAN, giving us the ability to be able to have multiple entry points with an alligator that holds things in place and then once we get past that, then there's the same, same features for the hold down purposes. You can also see that there's felt, there's bonds, there's zip ties, and as well, if we didn't use the caps that we have in place here, there are some seals for those caps. So a lot of the same items that we would have seen in the previous can are in that package. There are some other extra pieces that we would see here. These are for the purposes of attaching uh, different items within this case or for the purposes of hanging it as an aerial case. Um, most of the time we don't use these items at all. Major, major difference here is, is this gives us the ability to be able to bring in very large cables, say 288 counts, 432 counts, um, even on up to you know, thousand count uh, cases. They would use, in most case scenarios, this larger tray. They do have one size larger tray, but in most cases, we try to, the, the companies that we work with, they try to keep it as basic as possible, so you'll see this tray a lot, whether or not we're working with the 600 cases or the large 400, 450 cases, you'll see this tray very often. If we start working with the smaller cases on the 450s, then you'll see the even shorter case, uh, shorter trays, narrower trays within those. That really, in essence, is the difference of this 600 case compared to the 450 size cases that we saw earlier. Um, uh, there are different options you'll see, but they still have the same essential uh, concepts. We've got cable entry and seal. We've got hold down of the outside edge of the cable. We've got a bond point plus a strength member attachment point. Trays stack up very similarly here. We've got a excess buffer tube storage down below that is held in place by this, this strap here. And then once we have the trays in place, then there's another strap that would go to hold all the trays in place to keep them from flopping around and they'll stay secure if this was to be hung up on a line or put down into a handhold. All that movement, we'd like to keep everything as secure as possible possible inside of here. So the next item I'm going to talk about is this is considered a case, but this is what would be found inside a pedestal. Uh, you'll hear it referred to as a pedestal and we'll go over what those are in future videos. Uh, pedestal is something you'd see alongside the road. It's generally green so that they only make them green so that they mix in with the uh, with the landscape a little bit. Um, uh, but inside those there's very narrow ones, there's wider ones. This particular uh, device here is for the purposes of fiber optic uh, communication infrastructure construction and it is designed you'll see there's many different items on here this clips down into a, a stand up so our cables would be coming in through the pedestal and up through this way here so this is an attachment point here that holds and secures items this is the main bond point within the case and then if you open the case up you'll see a panel that's on the inside here this panel here is to be able to bond the cables off the entry point into here is a rubber gasket. That rubber gasket is uh, generally is just cut to be able to fit the cable that you're working with. The next item that you see up here, this is for your strength member hold down. There's also a location here with barbs so when the cables come through, they would touch this point. Inside here, there's many 
pieces and parts. In this particular case, they call it a two-sided case. Um, so you would enter your main cables on, the, on this back side of the case. They would come into, into this location here. Drops would generally enter in on the opposite side. Um, depending on the, the company that you're working with, they may want the drops to bond differently than if you than to be bonding to connect to the um, to connect to the earth ground that is inside the case and on the main cable. Some of the reason that they don't want the bond to go to the house is, is if there was a lightning strike that connected with the actual cable bond that has a potential to run that all the way into the premise. Uh, the, so in some cases they, don't, they, they have this bar being separate than the main bonding bar for your main cable or your CO cable. You can see that this has a lot of the same features of all the other items that we've been talking about. You can see there's bond cables here, several securement uh, devices to be able to hold the cable within the case itself. And then, of course, this folds up. The reason we call this a two-sided case is, is it gives a technician the ability to be able to work on this side uh, while another technician was working on this side. So, uh, in essence, giving us a two-sided case or two technicians can work simultaneously on this particular uh, device. This is a very common one. We're going to go over in depth about how to construct these. There will be thousands of these in our future. One thing that I keep overlooking is these little clear tubes that we have that come with all of these. We don't just throw these away, they just, we don't use them very often. These are designed if we have multiple trays within a case, you can take a strand of fiber that may have to land in one tray and then a different strand within that same buffer tube has to go to a different tray. You would use this tube in order to be able to protect that bare fiber with, when it's outside of the tray and needs to move from tray to tray. Final case that we're going to talk about on here is the AirFoss case. This is a very common case within telecom, um, maybe not something you'd see normally within a cable telecommunications or, or cable transmission company or for data. And there's a reason behind that is, is that it is, it's not as durable. It's definitely designed for aerial construction and it has features about it that were common within cable construction uh, or, or as we would refer to it as um, um, copper. If you'll hear us say copper, copper generally means that it was the two wire uh, tip ring concepts of telecommunications in the early days. So this, this was actually originally designed for that and then adapted to be able to accommodate fiber optic cables. A lot of very similar, similar items that you'll see that are uh, compared to the Tycos that we were working with. The other cases, the 450s and the 650s, some of the features would be that we would be able to have a gel seal, the gel seal for the cable when it enters the case. The next thing that you would see would be a bonding point. This cable here is for the purposes of bonding. Then you'd have a hold down. This is the designed here, working in conjunction with a, another uh, uh, device to be able to hold the cable in place. Once that enters through there, then we have some cable management that we usually deal with in order to be able to hold the buffer tubes in the proper place. And this particular case is as well, very modular. And you can see once we have it opened up, inside we have a small tray. This small tray has the ability to be able to double stack 12 fibers on each side. So you can put 24 fibers into this. This is one of the smallest trays that we work with here. Uh, depending on who we're working with, uh, uh, Construction-wise, that'll determine exactly how we build this out. One other feature about this case, if you look at it closer and you can see that it has these cable management ports here for your buffer tubes, and then once the loose tube fiber enters into the case here, um, when we close this device up, if a technician needed to audit a case uh, without interfering or disturbing the fiber trays themselves and opening those up, there's a clear window here that gives you the ability to be able to see through and see what's in the case itself. When I say clear, I mean kind of clear, but if we slide this over, we can then have an, uh, an optical view of, or then we can have a visual view of what's inside the tray for the purposes of auditing. This tray again was designed for the purposes of aerial construction, meaning it's going to hang in the air. Once it's put back in place and it's closed and sealed, then these are attachment points on each end of this to hang this, this case on the strand, securing it. It's pretty low profile, pretty lightweight, 